today on the implicit show we've got a special guest and i'm telling you guys this guy's story is super inspiring and you're going to get a lot from it so make sure you stick around to hear greg walker tapping into the true potential of the human spirit this is humanity empowered this is the implicit show Hello and welcome to The Implicit Show. I'm your host today. My name is Bren Dubay. We've got a special guest. I got to tell you guys, I'm super excited about this because um, we've had a really great week up until now. I mean, we had a ton of great guests during the week and today I think is a good workup to get Greg Walker on the show. And um, just just chatting with Greg before we clicked live here was really cool to hear his story. And he's got he's got such an intensity um, to the way he to the way he speaks and to his message. So um, I'm really excited to hear about his story of how he went from where he was to where he is today. And uh, I'll let I'll let Greg introduce himself for you guys. So Greg, introduce yourself a little bit a, a little bit, man. Tell us a little bit about your story, about who you are, and and what some of the experiences that created Greg Walker today. Well, thank you for having, uh, having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm Greg Walker. I'm 13 and 15 kids born and raised in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, my parents were drug addicts, alcoholics, whatever you want to say. You know, with brothers in and out of prison, sisters on the streets. You know, my uh, my baby, my 15 sibling had a baby, you know, under under 14 years old. That's amazing. Uh, my father had like 18. I don't even know how many, how many kids he had. Children, I mean, brother, sister. I thought I was like 18. My mom had about 15. I got 14. I'm the only one to ever make it out of the ninth grade, uh, let alone go to graduate high school and go to college. And that's because my teacher, Miss Renee Rivers, who saved me. My, my, my principal asked me on the very first day to drop out of high school just because my 12 siblings dropped out of high school before me. And I did drop out. I was leaving the door. He was right. Who am I to think that I'm the one who's going to make it? I'm pushing people in the lockers. I'm crying. As I leave the door, someone grabs my arm, my elbow. And I turn around. I just want to knock their damn teeth out. But with someone who I loved very much, my teacher, Mrs. Renee Rivers, she looked at me and says, boy, lower that hand. You ain't hitting nobody. What's wrong with you, Gregory? Why are you crying? I told the, my teacher what the principal said to me. I nicknamed her Little Rose after Rosa Parks, the great civil rights leader. This lady's about four foot tall, but she was bigger than Shaquille O'Neal. She grabbed my elbow, pulled me down to the principal's office, told me to stand my big butt there. She slammed the office door and that principal. And I tell people, I never realized a small Christian woman could curse and scream like a drunken, like a drunken <laughs> sailor. But she, she did that for me, man. She was taken up for me. And uh, my principal told me it was impossible. He said, young man, you're, you're number 13. Has anyone ever told you that's an unlucky number? And I said, no. He said, well, it is. So it's pretty much impossible for you to make it out of this high school. So I told my teacher, she came out, she said, Gregory, she pointed at me, she's, she always called me boy. She's a boy, you are not your mother and father, you are not your brother and sister. You are who you say you are. And if I have to hold your hand to get you through this high school to become the first one to ever make out, that's what I would do. And that's what she did. And I said, but Ms. Rivers, he said it's impossible that I make it out. 13, 12 before we didn't. She says, young man, that word itself, impossible, implies that I'm possible. She said, when you think something's impossible, take those first two letters, put them to the left. What does it tell you? And I said, I'm possible. She says, yes, you are. She walked me back to class that day. A month before graduation, she pulled me with three other teachers. She said, Gregory, shut the door. I said, am I in trouble? She says, no, shut the door. I shut the door. She says, young man, you are not going to graduate. I put my head down. She says, Greg, look at me. We know why you stare out the windows all the time. You are not dumb. You are not stupid. She says, you need, you need a two-point grade point average to accept that football scholarship to the University of Florida. You have a 1.9. I said, I don't know what you guys are talking about. She said, what we're talking about, we're gonna risk our jobs. We're gonna change your grade point average. We're not changing it from a zero to a two, a 1.9 to a two. So she's the reason why I became the first one ever to graduate high school in the history of my family. And then I had a guy in my, uh, she brought me in junior achievement uh, in the ninth grade. And I basically called him a loser because uh, he was teaching us, uh, saying how to do things. And he uh, said he dropped out in ninth grade. So I thought he was like my, my family. I called him a loser. That man who I called a loser became one of my first mentors. His name was Dave Thomas. He started a small hamburger chain here in Columbus called Wendy's. Really? And that's when I got, when I went to college, University of Florida, 
I saw this thing called Subway. Uh, my wife and I had a baby, so I dropped out at a light college. And I got my first Subway by working for someone. He basically fired me because he said, I cannot be a manager. I need to become an owner. And he financed my first store. I slept in my first business. See, a lot of people like to talk about they grind and they hustle. They don't know what grinding and hustle is. If you talk to my wife in the other room, I slept in my first Subway store for four years. Four years. I only left one hour to come home and see our baby and to shower. That's it. Seven days a week, four weeks out of the month, 12 months out of the year for four years. Basketball games, football games, birthday parties. I didn't have those. But look at me now, 51. My, I retired 12 years ago at 39. At 39, I don't have to get up and go to work in the morning. The only reason I get up is if I'm going to speak. I spoke to CNN. I took my two nieces I raised, took them to CNN. That's the only reason I get up to go to speak, to inspire the world. And I didn't speak. My wife had been married to for 29 years. I never asked her to marry me. I was that shy that I gave her only sibling the ring. I said, please go ask your sister to marry me. I ran to my boy's house. I ran to my boy's house. That's how shy I was. I had to learn to delegate because I did not speak till I was 11 years old from a tragedy I watched in my home. And now I speak around the world with people like Les Brown. I speak to CNN. People ask me, who do you speak to? I said, I speak to blue collar, white collar, and those without a collar. I'll speak to a rock if they can write a check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, that's crazy, man. Some of those experiences that you talk about, um, I could only imagine, I mean, growing up with that many siblings and like having that kind of track record of like, yeah, you know, we just don't go through high school. We just don't do it. It's just the family tradition, right? But then you had that, you had that, you know, what, whatever you call it that you had there and you had the support from your teacher who you said, you know, you can do this. You could be the one who defies the odds. You could step aside. And so I'm sure you took that mentality with you throughout the rest of your life. And you knew like anytime things seemed impossible, you could really twist them and, and, and turn it into I'm possible. And you could actually make things happen that way. So that's really cool. Um, Nelson, Mandela, Nelson Mandela said this, everything seems impossible until it's done. Mm hmm. And look what Nelson Mandela did, right? He changed That's right. He changed things, right? It's because it's that mentality. I love uh, whatever the saying was, you know, it's the, it's the crazy people who change the world, right? Because they're crazy enough to think they it actually it do is. it. And they yeah. do. And people always ask me, what made you become a successful entrepreneur? Well, I used to have to pick worms and sell them to bait stores so I could have food in my family. And while my brothers were picking four or five when they were getting high, I was picking 20 to 30 because I wanted more money. And that's where I got my crave for entrepreneurship. And I, I tell people, my author who wrote my book, she said, you know, Greg, you kid around and you say, you don't, I always tell people, I didn't get into the subway. And I helped open 210 uh, burrito franchises. I always kid people say, I didn't get into subway or Mexican to make money. I got into it eat because I didn't have food. And my author said, Greg, you know what? That could be subconscious. And I, I grew, now I understand, I think it was. That's why I wanted to open so many restaurants because I never wanted to have to go without food again. Never. My oh, wife and I know we our goal and our goal was never to make millions of dollars. Our goal was to, to give millions of dollars. I tell people all the time, Americans got it backwards. I'm sure you heard this. I'll give money when I make Greg Walker's kind of money, big dreamer money. No, you won't. Cause my wife can tell you when I went to give 10,000, 20,000, $50,000 away to my daughter's school, she had to smack my hand to let it go. When I hear people say, I'll give $1,000 when I make a million, no. Because if you can't get a, let, let $100 go out of your hand to help someone get a tire change, you would never let a $10,000 or $50,000 check. It's a lie. It's a myth. You got to start now, wherever mm -hmm. you're at. Yeah, and there's something about, there's a psychological shift when you give like that. You know what I mean? Whether you have five bucks to give or you have five million bucks to give, there's a psychological shift when you give. And like you said, you're not going to give a dime out of a dollar or if you don't give a dime out of a dollar, rarely you'll never give a million out of a hundred million, for example. It's a, it's a big lie. I tell people all the time, if you don't serve, you don't deserve. Yeah. Because when you can give someone, so, and I tell people all the time, I don't go to Starbucks, but if you go to Starbucks, if you see someone having a problem, an old couple, why don't you just say for one day, hey, can I pay for your Starbucks? Because that does something to you. It does something to you, to your, to your brain with, your heart. It just makes you feel good when you leave. And my wife can tell you, my wife smacked me one time when we had nothing. We used to work for Ralph Lauren. I used to buy people breakfast when we couldn't buy diapers. And she used to smack me and I'd say, dear, 
we are going to have a much better life than these people I'm buying donuts for. And, you know, we see those people now in their 50s and 60s, and I was 100% right. I was 100% right. Because when you can be a giver, I tell people all the time, impact before income. Mm -hmm. Most Americans got it wrong. They say, I'll make an impact when I make the income. No, you got to make the impact before. Mm -hmm. I'm a living example. I graduated 454 out of 455 because my teacher changed my grades, right? But my work ethic, my heart, my giving, that's what got me here today. And most Americans, I, social media, everyone's talking about, I'm going to be worth $100 million. I'm going to be worth a billion. They won't even make a million. They won't. They can sit there and lie to themselves, but they won't make it because I can tell their mentality is all backwards. Mm -hmm. They want to make a million dollars to drive a Lamborghini. That's the wrong thing. Yeah. Because I can teach anybody to go get a Lamborghini. I can teach anybody to go get a Ferrari. But what they do, they might be sleeping in a trailer with their Ferrari. And that's why I tell people, the big thing now is to be debt-free and to have a Ford Taurus. Imagine when you're debt-free and you drive a Ford Taurus and you can go anywhere in the world that you want, right? I know people driving Ferraris right now. And listen, I'm one of those, I used to be one of those guys. You know, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Hummer, Porsche. My wife still has $120,000 Mercedes Benz that's paid for. But I don't need those things anymore. I drive a minivan. I don't because I, I realize at 51, I don't need to impress anybody. You can ride by my house where my bedroom is larger than my house. I grew up with 14 siblings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I tell people, make an impact before you make an income. And mm -hmm. life will be phenomenal. Not good, not great, but phenomenal. Yeah, man. So tell us about this book. You said that your book just came out two days ago and it's called yes. Dream to Grow Rich. Tell me about Dream, how that came about. Dream to Grow Rich. How to, like my shirt says, how to dream, grind, and hustle your way to success. Because I believe there's only three keys. It's not the smartest people. There's people who graduated up top of me out of 455. They're not even a quarter of where I'm at in my life. That's because they relied on their GPA. I tell people, I don't care what if you graduated summa cum laude or whatever. That means nothing in the world. No. You know, that means, that means nothing. So my book is called Dream to Grow Rich, How to Dream, Grind, and Hustle Your Way to Success. The forward is written by the world's leading motivational speaker, Mr. Les Brown himself. I have endorsements from the man who made Michael Jordan, Coach Kobe Bryant, and Shaquille O'Neal. His name is Jim Clemens. He's from Columbus, Ohio. He won his first NBA championship with Wilt Chamberlain. Only two guys have 10 NBA rings. Phil Jackson, his former partner and his coach, and him. So he wrote a forward of back. I got Ruben Arana. I got Forbes Magazine. I got the, the a National Speaker Association president. So I have all these people backing me up on my book. Uh, and it's just phenomenal because I didn't read a book until I was 19 years old. And it was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. And so my book kind of takes off on that. But the one problem I have with Think and Grow Rich is there's nothing in there that talks about work. There's nothing in there that talks about work. And I hear so many people talk about uh, Think and Grow Rich. Oh, my gosh. All you got to do is just think it. Think it. Come on. Oh, here's the Lamborghini pulling up. And then you open your eyes like, I don't see no Lamborghini. <laughs> because so many people talk about the manifestation you got to have action you got to take steps right so my book it's a long it's it's about my life it's about the people i met like dave thomas my teacher uh les brown other people and it shows you steps when this woman wanted to write my book i said listen donna when you write my book i don't want to just be all about me about whatever i had whatever i did i want people to take actionable steps the way i did it because there's so many books out there just brag on themselves but there's nothing to say, how can I do this? And that's what I wanted. Yeah, it's a, it became a bestseller <clears throat> in the first day in, in three different categories. And um, I'm taking a tour around the country. After my book releases, I'm going to have my book signing here in Columbus. And then I'm, uh, I'm creating, I already created a Dream to Grow Rich Success Conference. Where you're not going to come just get pumped up by the big dreamer. You're going to go away learning how to get your credit score up in 30 days. You're going to have bankers that you're going to have numbers to where you can get a loan for a business. You're going to have someone to teach you how to write a, a business plan on one sheet of paper, not 50 sheets because banks don't want that. It's going to be a short, it's going to be a short resume of business plan. So when you leave there, if you cannot be successful, that's because you don't want to be successful. Yeah. You know, that's a good point. Uh, you know, I didn't read a book until I was, I think I didn't really get into books until I was probably 21 
And uh, the first book was Think and Grow Rich. And I didn't even read the thing, man. I listened to the audiobook because I just yes. so anti-reading at the time, right? And so I listened to the audiobook and it really did help change my thinking. And it helped me, like you said, it helps you kind of get the mindset, the mentality, the psychology of success. But you know, the psychology of success is pretty useless if you don't take that action that so many people talk about. And I find it's really interesting. There's a big, um, there's a big like debate, you know, a lot of people say, no, it's all about action, 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 action. Just worry about the action. Other people on the other side say, no, you could just, you know, you got to think of the mentality, the motivation, the inspiration, you got to get into the right mindset. But the truth is, you know, without the both of them, rarely will you get too far. You could work, 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 and work and burn out right? And then get sick of it. Or you could, you know, think, 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 and then get anxious or, or depressed or upset because you're in your head thinking about it all the time and you're not taking action. So the two and two go together. So I like how your book, um, like you said, actionable steps that people could take, right? They get, in, they, they hear your story a little bit and then they get inspired. They're like, okay, you know, this guy could do it, then I could do it. And then you give them the steps that they need to take. You give them the action that they need to take to get there. That's, that's amazing, man. So Tell me a little bit about um, how you're going out, you're traveling with this book, because I found that pretty cool. You said you're traveling around the country with it. There it is. Dream to right grow there. rich. How to dream, grind, yep. hustle. Yeah, when it, when it comes out, I'm going to be doing book tours all across the country. And then I'm taking my dream to grow rich success conference. I mean, I'm going to have people, now I don't really know about social media. I'm going to have people teach people how to uh, do social media. Because I tell people, you have to get out there. You know, when, Mur when Murray Newlands of Forbes magazine heard me speak out in San Francisco, he pulled me to the side and he said, you know, Greg, I have a problem with you. And I said, what's that, Murray? He said, you're not on social media. At the time, I was on nothing. And I said, well, you know, I retired in the restaurant business. I don't need social media. He said, Greg, did you hear that I spoke in eight countries in the last four weeks? I said, yeah. He said, well, they didn't want me. They wanted the big dreamer. But guess what? They don't know the big dreamer because he's in Columbus, Ohio in his nice big house. So he said, you got to get on. So I started on Periscope, did that, knocked it out. Um, I was voted number one motivator on Periscope. People started seeing me there, started booking me to speak. And now, you know, from Zambia to Israel, to Detroit, to Las Vegas, I'm heading to uh, uh, Miami soon. And then I'm going to uh, California, two times in California and Australia with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, you know what? Tell your story, people. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And like you were telling me before the show, you were telling me how most of your life you were hesitant to talk about yourself or your story at all, like at Never. all. And then all of a sudden, you know, recently, I think you said, what happened there? Like, how did you kind of break out of that and decide, okay, I need, people need to know this stuff. <clears throat> well, my doctor asked me to join Toastmasters, which is an organization to teach you to become a competent communicator. You know, a lot of people like CEOs go to that. People have to give presentation in their job. But it took me five years because I don't dress up. When I speak, when I spoke to CNN, I wear this ball cap, my shorts, and this shirt says Dream Grind Hustle because that's who I am. I got to my age at 4, 51, I got here by being me. So Les Brown told me I should um, join Toastmasters. His mentor, who's my mentor, Mike Williams, he told me I should. But it took me five years to get there. I got there, didn't speak. They told me I had a gift. And within six months, I was in Las Vegas, you know? Las Vegas for the World Championship Public Speaking. And I thought I um, I thought I was terrible. And they said, Greg, the guy who went ahead of you has been trying for like 20 years. You've only been at six months. So they, they got me to understand I have a gift. Then people started paying me. You know, 1,000 here, 1,500 there, 7,500, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. And now that's, I thought my whole career was restaurant. And now my, my, my purpose in life is to inspire people, to get people to step into their possibilities to step into their dreams, understand that they are worthy enough, to understand if this kid of 15 can become successful, massively successful, then you can emulate it. All you gotta do is emulate me. You can duplicate success. Success starts in the mind, and then the feet have to go get it. And I tell people all the time when I speak, you will never find a white FedEx truck or a brown UPS truck come up to your house with a box, and they say, Mr. Walker, hey, big dreamer, here you go. Here's your dream. You gotta go out and get your dream. You got to get through. Most people are just sitting there, just, you know, the Zen thing, you know, mm, my dream's coming. That ain't happening. You got to go out there and fight for it. You got to go get what you want. Because if you don't, someone else says, listen, I got a lot of employees that they build my dream. And I always tell them, I don't want you to work for me no longer than college or high school. 
But I have people who've been with me 20 some years. They're building my dream. When my wife and I are in Las Vegas and we're out on our boat, you know, on a nice summer day and they're working, they're not working on their dream. They're working on my dream. So I tell everyone, you're going to work on someone's dream, whether yours or someone else's. You might as well do it for yourself. Mm-hmm. And is it easy? No, because people see people throw around this word entrepreneur on social media. Most people would never, they can't be an entrepreneur. They're not, they, they need to go work for someone because they're kidding themselves. I, people say, what's an entrepreneur like? I said, don't look at the Lamborghini. Don't look at the Ferrari. Don't look at the Porsche, the Hummer, $120,000 Mercedes. Because you don't, you weren't there. My wife and I were crying in our 1986 Chevy Chevette. Yeah, that's, that's a, what an entrepreneur is. That's, that's an entrepreneur crying because you can't make payroll. Yeah. Crying because your taxes are too high. That's a real entrepreneur. It's it's crazy, <clears throat> man, because there is a ton of that online. Hey, like you see all these Facebook ads or these yeah. these commercials. Oh I'll yeah, look, hey, I'll, hustler. I'll go from Taco Bell and make six, <laughs> make six figures after coming from Taco Bell in only three days, and people just signed up. Yeah. My, my course was eight thousand dollars, but today it's only ninety seven ninety nine. And look at this Hummer. Oh, by the way, there's a pretty lady in a bikini over here too. Oh, by the way, and I got these stacks of money. You want to be like me? You should, you know, become an entrepreneur. And meanwhile, you know, there's so much work that goes into it because I know I I started entrepreneurship about a year, two years ago. I was working in landscaping, cutting grass for people, and I hated it. I absolutely hated it. And I told myself, man, I'm going to get off my ass and do something. I'm going to do something different. And so I took my music more seriously. I took my music full time, and now that's what I'm doing. I get to play music for a living. It's amazing. But at the same time, I still struggle sometimes, and I know why. Other entrepreneurs might struggle because you think about it, you don't have a boss there saying, hey, buddy, you know, this is your job. This is what you got to do today. There's no instruction manual to entrepreneurship. You kind of got to make it up as you go along. You have to you have to pave the way for yourself. And it's tough. It's really tough, man. So um, actually, Greg, I'm really curious to hear some of your biggest like best amazing lessons from this book like either you've learned from writing it or you've learned from your experience up to writing it or after you've written it tell me a little bit about like this book some more because i'm super interested basically well this book right here dream to grow rich how to dream grind hustle your way to success it's going to talk about me picking worms I, i found out how the harder you work the more money you can make the harder you work the luckier you get you know, doing the right thing, treating people right, becoming friends with a guy like Dave Thomas, you know, building those relationships, being screwed by people and learning from those mistakes. That's what this book is about. This book is, is about showing real life and showing you how I did it and giving you actionable steps to help you go live your dream. Now, will you be able to retire at 39? I don't know. That's why I tell people, they said, Greg, you're going to start a coaching program. Are you going to give a 100% money back guarantee? I say, absolutely not. Because if I give my, my 28 year daughter tools and wood to build a house, right? And she doesn't move. Why should, why should I give her a money back guarantee? I, if you, if you're not going to go out and hustle and sleep in your business for four years, like I did, why should I give you hundred? So that's what this book teaches you. No excuses. I don't care what your mommy did to you, what your daddy didn't do to you. It's, it's up to you. There's no excuses. You have to take this day. And go forward and live a phenomenal life. You should not want average. Average mediocre people are always at their best. They never change. Most people in America are average. They're broke and they're unhappy. That's the average. Why? Because people let fear direct them. They let fear direct them. Fear is a myth. It's not going to smack you. You're not going to lose a limb. People are just fearful of taking a chance. And how will you ever know how great can you be if you never take a chance? You know, my, when I take my niece to work and my other nieces, every time we see a funeral, we just saw one this morning, we pull over for respect. And that's what my niece case I said, look at that, look at that hearse. Is there a teacher in that hearse that never became a teacher? Is there a scientist? Is there a best song that the next Stephen King? Probably not because they, they didn't take chances. They were afraid. They didn't jump and grow their wings on the way down. They were so fearful that they, they sat in a nursing home. I visit nursing homes two times a week. And I see those people in there and I, and I talk to them. And the thing they tell me is, young man, live your life. That's what they tell me, live your life. And I said, you don't have to worry about that. People ask me all the time, how are you doing? I say, I'm alive, I'm phenomenal. I'm better than good, better than most. 
Because I understand someone's in a nursing home at 40 years old with MS and they'll never leave that nursing home. They're in a wheelchair. I know someone's getting cancer treatments right now. So my book teaches you to go step into your possibilities. That the world is an oyster, it's yours. You can have, I can go back, I can go become a, 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 a scientist at NASA, right? Right now, all I have to do is find a, a NASA scientist and say, how did you get that job, that career? And just emulate them. Now, it might take me 150 years when it only took them 10, but I can do it. That's the difference between me and most people. I believe I can do anything. I think about it. I think, you know, the way technology is evolving, the way society is evolving, <coughs> there's just more and more evidence to prove that you can do just about anything. There's just more and more every evidence because you think about it, like what blows my mind is how every day, you know, someone's breaking a world record or somebody's creating a new technology or creating a new industry or something along those lines or revolutionizing, you know, the world. It's crazy. The opportunities that are happening on a consistent daily basis and it's only happening faster and faster and faster. So if you're, you know, I don't care if you're 18 right now and you're just stepping out to the world and you're like, I don't know what to do. There's no possibilities for me. Or if you're like 70, and you feel like you're not down and out yet and you want to do something with your life, but you don't see the possibilities like, dude, dude, cell phones, <laughs> right. you could start a business on your cell phone. You could change people's lives on a cell phone. You could have That's an right. impact I, that way. No, the great thing simple. about cell phones <clears throat> is um, you talk about age. I, I, I tell everybody who's listening, go watch the movie Founder about Ray Kroc. He didn't start the McDonald's, but he bought the McDonald's brothers out. Ray Kroc was a, a milkshake salesman who failed many times. And when he went to buy the McDonald's franchisees from them, he went to every bank and they were like, hey, aren't you Ray? Aren't you Ray? Aren't you Ray? Because he brought so many floppy products to the banks for investments. He was 54 years old when he started, when he bought the McDonald's brothers, 54. I hear people in their twenties and thirties say they can't make it. And I'm like, you can't make it because you don't want to make it. Yeah. You don't want to make it. That's the problem with most people. They don't think they can make it. They hang around people who, who have never done anything in their life. They want to tell them that they can't do it. Listen, I had a lot of people who I asked to invest with my wife and I 30 some years ago that now nah, I don't want to get into it. Most Americans are bandwagon fans. They don't like the NFL team until they win the Super Bowl, right? It's kind of like the Cleveland Indians here in Ohio. When they were the old Cleveland Indians, people made fun of them. You could see probably 20 people in the stands. As soon as they build the new Jacobs Field, Everyone said they were a season ticket holder, right? Yeah. When, when things go good, no one wants to be the first person to ride in the, the, in the first car. No one wants to be the first person to go to space. This is why phones are so great. This is my buddy Hans Frailer. Look at that. He's in New Zealand holding my book, sending it to me live. What up, Hans? <laughs> nice. Okay, he's got my book on his, on his phone. New Zealand, that's why this thing is so tough. It's across the world, man. Yes, what, what took me maybe 10 to 15 years to make my first million in cash. There's people don't, listen, when I do my courses, my, my coaching um, on speaking, on business, my mentorship, my book, I'll make a million bucks in the first year. If you think about it, my book, <clears throat> I go into a recording studio tomorrow to uh, make my audio book. And people say all the time, there's not a lot of money in the bank, in, in books, right? Well, my book is, is going to be $20 for the paperback. So if you sell that, I only got to sell a hundred books to 500 schools. That's 50,000 books. That's $1 million, a hundred books, right? In Ohio, there's 1800 schools alone. 18. So when I tell people, don't look at big numbers, break it down. Because when you say 50,000 books, right, it's a lot. But when you say you only got to find 500 schools or organizations in the whole world to buy a hundred right now, I have a real estate guy who, who wants to buy a thousand of them. So now that's 10 schools that I got rid of. So when you break it down, like just a million dollars in the book. I have a friend who made a million five out of his garage selling his book. Yeah, just you could just breaking it down like that, eh? Like if you think you gotta sell them individually, right? Oh, I gotta sell yeah. one book at a time. Damn it, you know? I gotta convince, you know, 50,000 people to buy a book, right? It, it exactly. could be way simpler than that, right? Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I did it. I learned it from the restaurant business. You know, people are always like, oh man, how am I going to raise sales? Got to sell this to me. So I said, don't oh, look at that. Look at how many sandwiches, how many tacos, burritos you have to sell in just one day. And they look at that and they're like, wow, that's only 30 extra burritos a day. That's only 25 extra subs a day. 
Americans like to think of the big picture up front. Mm-hmm. I don't do that. I use I use simple math. What does it take every day <clears throat> that I have to do? That's another thing I talk about. People talk about making goals. Head down here. I tell them, listen, stop what you're doing. When I spoke to 3,500 high school seniors, and a kid said uh, in the ninth grade, he said, Mr. Walker, I'm not going to college. I said, why? He said, I don't have the grades. I said, are you a senior? He said, no, I'm a freshman. I said, what in the hell are you worrying about college for? You got to take care of your grades right now as a freshman. Because if you don't take care of what's due today, right? If you don't pay your electric bill, your rent today, why are you worried about two years down the road? You won't even make it. Your electric gets shut off. So I tell a lot of Americans, worry about today. Today is all we have. Enjoy today. Dream, mm-hmm. grind, and hustle for today. And then tomorrow, do it again. And do it again. And do it again. Before you know it, you'll be able to retire at 39 years old. There you go, guys. You heard it. That's that's Greg Walker. I mean, we're coming up to the end of the show here. Um, I, obviously, I feel like he could just keep going. He's keep going. He's got this book. He's got years and years of experience in this area. So that's super cool, man. Thanks so much for hopping onto the show and sharing your story. It's super it's inspiring for me because I feel like, you know, as an entrepreneur, I'm in the early stages, right? I'm, I'm working on there. I'm, I'm in the struggle mode. I'm in the grind mode. I'm in the mode where I have to you know, put in the longer hours to make it happen now. And uh, it just gives me hope that, you know, if I remain consistent, if I That's keep it. on going, no matter what, I persevere, break through the things. Don't worry about what other people are saying or thinking or whatever and just focus on what I'm doing. And I think, uh, thank you. And <laughs> I like to tell people, listen. Persistence outweighs a college degree. Persistence outweighs talent. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are talented, right? There's more people more talented than, than uh, Dr. J, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, but they never showed up. They're still getting high at 50 some years old on the street car, talking about how they used to beat Michael Jordan, right? <clears throat> and I tell people, CPP, CPP, the choices that you make, the people you come in contact with, and the persistence that you must have. If you have those three things, choices, people, persistence, I guarantee you you will have a happy life. And it's not all about money, because I know people that make 60, 40, $50,000 a year, and they're very happy. And I have a friend, my wife and I, who made a million dollars a month, a million a month, and he put a bullet in his mouth. So it's not about money. No. It's not about, now I love money, right? I love money. Cause I can take care of my niece and nephews. I can help my, my two neighbors who are accountants when they lose their jobs, but it's not everything because no. right now a friend of mine died who started subway here and he left his two drug addicts, kids, seven, seven, $72 million. He died at 57. That money didn't help him. Did it? No. And he didn't believe in friends. So he had no one to come to his funeral. They had to beg people to carry his casket. He, all, he was all about money. And I tell people, you know, there's the big thing with 10X and everything, 10X. And well, I tell people 10X is good, but you don't want to be a 10X business person and be a 1X parent, a 1X spouse, right? You, If you want to 10X it, 10X everything, not mm-hmm. just your business. Because in the end, it's not about the money we have. It's about the people surrounding us in our bed. Yeah. It's about your life and your legacy, man. Exactly. So People great. first. Yeah, exactly. So Greg, tell us where um, tell us where the people can get in contact with you or get a hold of your book, Dream to Grow Rich. Yeah, they can go to um, Amazon, Dream to Grow Rich, and my paperback is coming out in a couple of weeks. My hard cover is coming out, and I'm recording my audio book tomorrow in a uh, in a recording studio. A friend of mine is a rapper, and uh, he got me some time in there, so it's going to be really professional. It's going to be great. Mm-hmm. My book signing is going all around the country. They can find me on a uh, uh, Facebook. A dream grind hustle dream grind hustle on facebook everywhere else greg inspires boom there you have it guys greg's a busy guy we should let him go he's getting phone calls left and right you know uh make sure you go check out his book it's all that stuff's coming out soon on paperback hardcover audiobook and uh hook up with him on social media and and uh if you guys want to support what we're doing here at implicit you can, you can go to patreon.com slash implicit where you could get books and courses and audios and coaching and mastermind all that stuff is available there and um yeah we just gotta say thanks one more time to greg for coming in and thank you guys for tuning in and sharing and liking and all that good stuff greg let's let's see the peace sign peace the peace, peace. peace peace see ya